What's up, beautiful bosses, and welcome back to the art of engraving. Today, I actually wanted to bring you along as I prepared and practiced for the Miss Dior pop up event back in spring of 2022. Yes, I know this is posted a little bit late, but it's better late than never, right? And just check out this amazing setup because it's so beautiful. Honestly, I've never seen this many Miss Dior fragrances in my life, and it was just such an honor to be here with the incredible Miss Dior team. So, in this video, I'm going to show you you my setup and tools, how to engrave the names, how to use rub and buff, and how to create a two-dimensional look with floral engravings. You'll even see me in action at the very end and you can see a close-up of my view. And of course, if you haven't done so already, definitely take a moment to hit subscribe so you don't miss any more of these amazing tutorials and videos. So here is another video of my desk and I wanted to do a quick freeze frame here just to show you exactly how clean and elegant my desk is. And the reason why I do that is because I know that these luxury events are incredibly elegant and simple. And so my goal as the calligrapher is to match that aesthetic. Remember that when you're getting hired on by a luxury client, they're actually hiring you for the entire package. So not only the art, but also the aesthetic and your vibe and your energy as well. Let's talk supplies and everything I'm using today can be found in my Amazon storefront linked in the description below. So the main thing that I use for my organization skills is this cute little white cubby and it actually has a magnetic bottom that you can stick onto a bigger wooden panel that keeps everything organized. So this particular piece is holding my q-tips, my rub and buff, my burr lube, and it also holds my pens, pencils, and anything to sketch during my event as well. The machine that I'm using today is called the Mestiza 2, but I also have another one called the Yoke Fellow which is on my Amazon storefront front and honestly I love having both engravers with me because you just never know what's going to happen at your event. I've heard of so many stories of the engraver actually dying on you whether it's because you didn't charge it the night before or you dropped the handpiece on the floor on accident. You just never know what's going to happen so it's better to be safe rather than sorry. For the burrs I'm using the long shanked diamond tipped ball burrs and they come in all different size diameters starting at one millimeter and goes all the way up to three millimeter. I recommend using the one millimeter for these really small projects like small tiny perfume bottles and the three millimeters for larger projects like wine bottles. It all comes with practice so just make sure that you are familiarizing yourself with the tools that you have and then it'll become second nature to you. Other things to complete the kit is the microfiber cloth, scissors, cotton buds, and the handle holder. For sketching I have two different tools. It's the Marvi Uchida chalk marker as well as the Stabilo all pencil. And then you throw it all into your kit and it looks super cute and organized and I just love it. Now we're ready! So here is the star of the show. It's the Misty or Ode perfume and I'm super excited to engrave this and I'm cutting it off at the top with my cute little rose gold baby scissors and I'm just taking off the top of the cellophane so that it makes it really easy to re-gift. So notice I'm only taking off the top part so that the flap is the only thing that's showing and then from there I can open it up and take it out super easily so it still looks like it's brand new and wrapped. The person who's receiving it doesn't look like it you know was opened and tampered with. I'm doing a quick inspection of the bottle and just looking at all sides of the bottle just to see which ones would look the best with the engraving. If at all possible, I love integrating the logo as well as this handmade beautiful poignant fragment bow that they made just for this specific bottle. It's hand tied to perfection so definitely want to include that. So I'm actually sketching out the name using the Marvi Uchida chalk marker and I actually use this more often than the Stabilo. For the purposes of this demonstration, this showed up so much better than the Stabilo's. So this is for your viewing pleasure and for support I have my pinky on there and just kind of floating my hand out there but you can also use a pillow to give you that extra support and reduce any strain that you have. Now onto the exciting part and that's the engraving. So I'm using the Mestizo 2 handle with the 1.5 millimeter burr. I have the speed set at 35,000 rpms. With experience I know that the Misty or perfume has one of the more dense um, really good quality glass so I know that I have to use a brand new burr and the speed at the highest setting. If you can tell that the glass is a little bit softer or that you don't need to go as fast or maybe it's starting to chip then that's a signal for you to slow down your RPMs and just in general if you are not sure about which speed to start at I would start at like 15 to maybe 18,000 RPM and kind of work your way up from there. In pharmacy we like to say start low 
and go slow. So you can definitely work that into your methods as well. So if you can already tell, I'm actually saving some of the descenders for the very end. And that's because I know that I need a little bit more support on there as well. So as you can see, the Y is a little bit tricky here and I'm trying to figure out what the best direction to engrave is. And I ended up going just a little bit farther just so that I could have more room to add that flourish. At this point, I'm pausing the machine to remove some of this excess dust and to see what I have underneath on my canvas. And I'm using a brush and a napkin and you can use the napkin to wipe away or you can use your finger. Personally for me, I just like using the finger because it's a lot easier, but definitely exercise caution and safety whenever possible. If you like the monoline look, go ahead and keep it that way. But if not, you can feel free to add the faux calligraphy. I went ahead and manipulated the bottle and just kind of moved it wherever I had to so that I can rest my hand and my arm appropriately so that it doesn't cause any excess strain if I can avoid it. So from here, I'm using the same size burr, which is the 1.5 millimeter burr and adding the thicker shadowing of the downstroke onto the appropriate letters. This gives it that full calligraphy feel and makes it look so, so elegant as compared to monoline. Probably the coolest step is adding a rub and buff into the engraving. Now at this point, you definitely wanna make sure that all of your engravings is perfect because the rub and buff really does highlight all of your mistakes and different things that you may or may not have messed up on. So definitely take a look at it and just ensure that you got every single piece and everything is perfect. And rub and buff in case you haven't seen any of my previous videos definitely take a look at those but rub and buff is a metallic wax that hangs on to pretty much anything that is a matte texture aka your engraving another thing to keep in mind is that not all bottles can take rub and buff for example the dolce and gabbana light blue perfume bottle is entirely matte texture so you won't be able to fill that in with the rub and buff otherwise the entire bottle will be covered in rub and buff and you will have destroyed the bottle as you're working the rub and buff definitely make sure that you are working very quickly and just use a simple cotton pad to remove everything. Let me know if you want a separate tutorial on this because I feel like I could talk about this for 20 minutes. And that's it. The bottle itself is already gorgeous with the rub and buff name on it already, but we definitely want to add the extra dimension and kind of the wander crafter flavor of adding a two-dimensional engraving with the florals. So that's what we're working on here. I wanted to show you what it looked like to sketch it out with the Stabilo pencil, but as you can see, it's a little bit harder to see and you have to apply more pressure for it to go on there. If you don't have a super steady hand, I would definitely use the Stabilo just because the blue in the chalk marker could actually seep into the engraving if you're not super careful with it. So just make sure that you have a pretty steady hand and you know where your flowers are going to go. I think at this point, this was probably the hardest part for me because I hadn't really figured out like exactly where I wanted to put the flowers yet. So I was going back and forth with different designs and really just kind of thinking about where things would go and what would complement the engraving the nicest without, you know, kind of overwhelming the bottle itself. So the client did send me the inspiration photo and video, kind of like the photos that you saw in the very beginning in the footage of the event itself. But I definitely wanted to work in some of the floral notes like the Lilia Valley, the peonies, and some of the irises as well, just because those are the floral notes that kind of inspired the fragrance in the first place. Once I was super happy with the placement of the florals, I went ahead and started engraving it at the same speed with the same burr and pressure as well. I actually think I went a little bit lighter on this point just because these are flowers and they are a little bit more delicate than um, the actual calligraphy engraving. So I did use a little bit of a lighter hand here, especially when you start adding in some of the textures and details in the flowers as well. When I'm engraving different flowers, I definitely like to kind of experiment with different pressures and size and things like that just to kind of work with the design of the bottle. I went ahead and kind of engraved the outline of the flowers first before adding in the delicate details and I'm going to go ahead and add in some of the centers as well just to create that central of the flower and then just add little teeny tiny details just to kind of create that extra dimension. Sometimes when you're engraving um, especially these teeny tiny little details less is more and I think I was going a little bit too crazy with the sample bottle but I still love how it looked and in the end the client actually really liked the flowers on the um, Elizabeth perfume just because it added a little bit more to their aesthetic as well. So that's the one we went with. Finally, to close off this tutorial, I wanted to show you a clip of me in action at the Miss Dior pop-up event. 
At this point, I've done about 15 bottles and I've really started to understand the canvas and composition, so I started freehanding it just to save some time. I was a little slower here because the guests were learning about the spring makeup and fragrance launch so I could take my time and record with my camera without ruining the vibe. You always want to check with the coordinators before you start recording yourself. And just to give you a pro tip, adjust your workflow to the speed of your event. In the moments where I was slower, I did the two-tone 2D effect just because I had some time to pause. When I was busier, I filled the whole thing with silver just to make it pop out because I didn't really have time to pause in between doing the words and the floral design itself. Either way, I think both designs were beautiful and it really provided the variety in design to some of the different clients that attended. If you want to know more about how to find these types of events and work with your dream client, definitely check out my coaching program below. So many of my clients in the Craft Academy have been able to work with their ideal clients and that means you can too. And if you found this tutorial super helpful, please help me by sharing this video with someone who might want to learn engraving or even start a calligraphy business of their own. It would truly mean the world to me and it allows me to put out free educational videos and content just like this one. So tell me in the comments, what was your favorite tip that you'll be using at your next event? Until next time, happy engraving everyone!